let's get started. Was there anything that you did in high school that helped you decide you wanted to go into liberal arts? Yeah. So I would say from a high school perspective, you know, one of the things that I, of course, recommend, and I know that I did a lot not learn, knowing at that point of time is really explore the subjects I liked. So I, you know, made sure I spoke to people uh, who, you know, could give me more advice on some of the classes that I was taking in liberal arts. So whether to go into economics or political science or English or sort of what areas was something I definitely was talking to. And then um, I did a less in high school, but as I, you know, as I applied to colleges, I did do my summer uh, sort of apprenticeship is what it was called back then um, into areas that would help me really get focused on whether I wanted to continue to pursue this. Next, what was the most beneficial course you took in college? I, you know, I majored in political science and then had minors in history and English. And um, I started also doing a um, part-time job in radio. You guys will laugh now, but it was a lot of fun. And it really got me to understand the medium of you know, today when you all are, when we are all on social media, it's a medium, right? So back then radio was a medium and it taught me the power of the written word, the spoken word, um, how to structure a story. Uh, you know, I would, I would do small articles and report them on current events and, you know, what was happening in different colleges and in the towns and the cities. And, you know, I, I sort of had that kind of a thing. Um, and they all really primed me very well when I finished my undergrad and, you know, walked into my first job at a very large worldwide. My first job was at McCann Erickson, which is a big, large advertising agency across, uh, you know, across many countries. What does your typical day-to-day -day job look like? My day-to-day -day job, unfortunately, is a lot of meetings. Um, but I will tell you that I do, um, I do block time out, you know, to generally respond to sort of all sorts of emails and communications and needs like that. Um, I also spend time probably on a weekly basis, if not on a regular basis, trying to keep up with, um, you know, what's happening in the industry. And so to the question that, uh, I think there was a twofold question. What are the books? I would say I read a lot of, um, I read a lot more online and digital these days than I read books. Um, and, you know, in general, the resources, some of the resources that I typically um, get, you know, on a regular basis, look at are some of the, uh, some of the analysts like the McKinsey's of the world, Forrester, some of those. Um, I also sort of subscribe to, you know, other companies um, uh, that are in the area and the world of marketing, um, you know, and that way I can sort of collect the information that's coming in over the week. And maybe, uh, you know, I have some blocks on my calendar that then I will just catch up with. But I have to say, I read less books. I read more articles. I, I listen to a lot of podcasts these days. There are, there are some good um, uh, podcasts. And LinkedIn is a great resource. Often I will spend you know, definitely on LinkedIn every other day, um, probably about half an hour or so. And I'll see a lot of people in my network um, and extended network share a, a lot of resources. And, you know, and that's another way that I keep up with resources. What are some of the past products you've worked on? So I, you, I've had a 20 plus years of career experience, which means I've worked on a lot of products, right? But I'll tell you, I, in my early days of my career, you know, when I joined advertising, um, I actually worked on consumer products like Coca-Cola and Nestle, you know, big worldwide multinational brands. I also actually worked on UNICEF as a, as a, a, brand, as a client and, you know, as a project. Um, as I moved into technology companies in the Silicon Valley, um, I worked at Adobe, as you know, in my introduction. So if you know Photoshop, 
you know, I worked on that product and a lot of, uh, you know, Adobe products that you all may be aware of. I've worked on device products, meaning phones. So Nokia is a, you know, used to be a phone company. I used to, when I was at Nokia before the Blurb, I ran their VR cameras. Um, so, you know, some of the hardware products like that. And then, you know, I obviously have worked a lot um, on software. Uh, products right now. Blurb's main product line is books. So I work with a lot of, you know, how do you, how does software help you to publish and create photo books, e-books, trade books, magazines, and that kind of thing. So variety of products. At what stage does the marketing strategy take place? Let's go back to the strategy and the planning um, of it. So in, you know, if you have a full-fledged functioning marketing organization and an established one and if the company is also a bigger company not talking generally about startups here then the marketing strategy starts to come right as product features and product level um, planning is starting because the goal of you know, the goal of marketing is not to market just the product, but to understand the market and a product fit. What that means is most often there'll be a insights and a research team around in, within marketing or related to marketing that is feeding information to what level of needs are needed in a product. And then the product development and the product teams are working around that. And marketing is thinking about you know, how that product and market fit really happens. So, you know, strategy and planning, um, to whoever is asking that question, strategy and planning differs in most companies. But if you are going to do it the right way, you want to have product and the marketing teams or, the, or some aspects of marketing teams right at the beginning um, be joined at the strategy session so everybody's clear what is sort of the plan um, and what is it that that product line is um, going, you know, uh, going out to market with? What would you say is your go-to marketing strategy? So, you know, I, I don't think there are strategies in marketing are set up as one. So, you know, when a company markets, you know, there are multiple strategies that are running. I'll tell you one thing that completely stopped as a result of COVID, and that is most companies you know, most marketing departments and almost all companies have trade shows and workshops and, um, you know, um, a, a lot of in-person customer meetings, that all stopped, right? As soon as they were shut down, COVID shut down, that all stopped completely. And so that's a marketing strategy that no longer we started to plan for once we realized that there is no going to a place and hosting you know, around table session or something like that, and that this is more going to be the norm. So that particular strategy, I think, completely changed. I think the other strategy that is, you know, really going to change, and all of you who are going to be going into college and looking at careers um, should definitely be thinking about this, is a lot of shopping is now digital and online, right? And so what does that mean for companies that did not have an online presence? And so companies today are racing that never had an online presence to have an online presence so that, you know, they not only go through this COVID section, but maybe even after COVID, people get used to, you know, buying things online and that they can support that. What is your favorite and least favorite thing about your job? So, you know, I am a marketer at heart. I run a marketing and a communications team, what that means is my team and I manage all aspects of marketing. Everything that the company does in regards to a customer is, um, you know, is done through me uh, and my team. And today, if any one of you are exploring marketing, it is a combination of art and science. You know, marketing is a lot around social media campaigns and programs, storytelling, a lot of the artistic endeavors fall under the brand, but there are also all these technology platforms that are the back end of the websites and the social media and the data. So I really like, I really like this intersection of, and the combination of art and science that sort of powers marketing. And that I would say is the 
sort of the favorite thing um, around my job? Least favorite thing? Well, you know, when challenges suddenly arise. So think about the COVID-19 um, when it started in March. That was a big surprise in the business. During, of course, all of you guys, as you guys stopped school. So I think I would say the least favorite is to be faced with some of these, you know, uh, not planned for challenges and then having to work workarounds around that. How has COVID-19 impacted your career? So obviously much like schools, all of you who are, you know, doing online, all of the business world moved online as well. So pretty much my entire company, my entire organization, and everybody moved into working. What that meant is you could not just get up from your desk and walk up to another person's desk and ask a question and that you had to schedule a phone call. Um, you know, when you work in a company or in an organization or on a team, and this is for you all also, when you guys are in classroom, there's a lot of teamwork, right? There's a lot of collaboration and work that you're doing together. Perhaps you're doing projects together. It's the same in the business world, you know, small groups of people are working on certain projects and they need to be in person. And it obviously was challenging to be not in person. And that meant that you had to either be very communicative about timings and scheduling your meetings and making sure that, you know, things that you could have easily done that cannot be done now um, is done through differently. And so, you know, COVID-19 was definitely a big impact, I think, on all our lives, school lives as well as business lives. What are some tips you would give to someone interested in pursuing a career in marketing? So I would, you know, there is, so for marketing, I think one of the things that I would probably look at is, honestly, you could have a degree in anything. Your undergrad can be um, pretty much in any, any field, but in general, most people that will come through marketing will have, you know, a liberal arts degree, a journalism degree, or a communications degree, or a business degree. Um, most of the time. I think some of the skill sets that are really critical uh, in marketing, so if you're interviewing for a role, you know, are you a good writer? I think good writing is one of the hallmarks of, um, I think anywhere actually, if you ask me, but definitely in marketing. Are you a good communicator? You know, both written and oral communication is critical uh, because as a marketer, you also have to do a lot of work within the company in order to make sure that you are clarifying the marketing strategy, the planning, and that means a lot of that communication um, that will come into play. And so definitely written and oral communication is important. I would say from a soft skills perspective, I would look at teamwork, collaboration, and leadership. Um, a lot of times marketing Groups are hubs inside a company, and so they are working with finance, they're working with product, they're working with engineering, they're working with HR, um, and a lot of groups. And that means, you know, people who are coming into marketing should be able to develop skills and aptitude towards driving groups towards a shared vision, towards a project completion. Um, I think project management is really critical, to be honest. Um, you know, you may, not, you, you may not want to be a project manager, but if you manage anything within marketing, that usually will have a deadline, that usually will have, you know, a plan, that usually will have a budget. And so certainly you should have some understanding of how does something go from a concept to completion. So I would say those are some of the things that from a marketing standpoint, and then, you know, you should all follow basic best practices for um, interviewing, um, you know, which are general practices. Your resume should be clean, no typos. You should research the company you are interviewing with, um, you know, research the person you're interviewing with, be very clear about your, what you bring to the company, um, and then, you know, make sure that you're asking questions of the company. That's definitely something, um, you know, you should be doing if you're interviewing. Does that help? What has been your most memorable experience at your job? Oh, 20 years, lots of memorable experiences. But I'll say that, um, you know, 
the most memorable projects or campaigns or initiatives end up becoming the ones where you and the team, and you could be either on the team or lead the team, you know, either case, um, have ended up successfully going or have moved through a successful completion. Um, so in other words, it's not just the end result that counts, but it's also how you got to that end result. And so, you know, if the success and the success, success in marketing could look in, in many different ways, you know, I've had campaigns that have won awards. And as a team, we've been very excited about having a campaign win an award. Um, you know, I've had initiatives that have led to greater sales that obviously is, you know, definitely impressive in terms of making the sales numbers. I've had um, initiatives where we've gotten a lot of, you know, we've launched a product despite all of the um, sort of blockers and obstacles that have come in the way. But the com common core theme in all of this is what, how, how did the whole team move forward? Um, how much, you know, enthusiasm, excitement, momentum was there. And so when you did reach the success, then that feels a lot more credible um, than if the process of, you know, reaching that success was, wasn't there. What would you say has been your biggest motivation? So, you know, I, I think I said this, I'm sort of a marketer at heart and I love the art of storytelling. Um, I've always loved that. And, you know, I, I think from high school, um, I've, I'm a voracious reader. I love movies. I watch, um, you know, a lot of different kinds of uh, art and things. So at, at the core of me, you know, I love the concept of storytelling. And if you look at the function of marketing, most of the time you are taking a product you are taking, looking at who your customer is, and you're basically creating pathways for engagement, you know, and then obviously a sale in the process. You're basically trying to, you know, tell a customer what the product brings, and you're trying to make sure your product is bringing what the customers need. And the world of marketing today is a lot around art, but a lot of science with the data and the website technology and the technology platforms and all of that that is going on. And I love the intersection of science and art and storytelling. You know, I don't know if you at high schools are doing design thinking, uh, but a lot of that design thinking is all about, you know, putting yourself in the shoes of your customer. The whole empathy aspect of design thinking teaches you well, you know, if I'm going to use a refrigerator, what is my first thing I do with the refrigerator? How do I, you know, put my things in a refrigerator? Why should the shape of a refrigerator be something, you know, if, if the refrigerator is your product, right? And so that whole, um, you know, gamut really is very, very interesting to me and different aspects of this, of course, have sort of, you know, I have different expertise levels, but I really find sort of at the core level, those elements uh, that motivate me. Finally, to close out, what are some general pieces of advice you would give to the attendees listening today? I would, what I would say is, I think it's okay to be undecided, first of all. You know, as long as directionally you know where and which subjects you kind of like you know, whether it is marketing or business or a specific liberal arts psychology or something, you know, I think that eventually in a career will mean less unless you specifically are focused. If you do psychology and you want to be a psychologist, that's different, right? Then you absolutely have to feel. But if you are in the areas of business and marketing is an area of business, larger area within business, then certainly I would say major in a subject that you like, you know, and that you're going to, you know, you're going to spend your four years doing. Um, and you can always minor in something and, um, you know, take some additional classes and some other things if you think those will help you. I do think 
the more and more what I see today and what I expect the world to go towards is multidisciplinary, you know, and that's what I meant when I said intersection of art and science. And so it's, you know, the more you all can think multidisciplinary, so not just as a STEM or not just the liberal arts, but maybe you're thinking AI, which is STEM, you know, artificial intelligence, but then how do you pair that with, you know, what is artificial intelligence used in? Maybe artificial intelligence is used in conversations and how to decipher conversations. That's a liberal arts subject. Um, so, so um, you know, I think having some level of combination is always good. If I had a choice, you know, I didn't have that many choices in undergrad like you all have now. Um, I would I would do that more. I would combine economics with English and I would combine, you know, maybe other some related analytics STEM subjects with liberal arts more to sort of give me a good, you know, multidisciplinary um, focus. But then if you know you want to do software engineering, you don't need that. Then you are very clear, right? That, hey, you want to do software engineering. This is definitely for people who are still exploring where exactly do they want to land and what kind of career they want to have. Special thanks to Paramita and for everyone that tuned in today. Until next time. Thank you. Thank you, everybody. Oh.